Hello. Well, uh, today I sort of wanted to do uh, two videos. Uh, just doing a retrospective for Star Wars Episode Two and Episode Three. Now this one obviously will be Episode Two. Um, and I'm doing this because you know in May I did a retrospective of the Phantom Menace because it's 20 years old this year, and, you know, since episode 9 will come out in December, I thought, why not just have a retrospective of all the films I have yet to even really talk about in any big sort of way, um, and what I mean is obviously sort of why I like this film in this case. Why do I like episode two? Um, for many, uh, regarding the prequels, either this or episode one is seen as the worst of the prequels. Um, and again, for those who haven't <laughs> got, I have this version because I did have the original uh, normal box version of the film, or the normal size, I should say, but, uh, there. But, you know, I gave those to my mom when, uh, I saw they had them smaller, and it would also help with my shelving and stuff, and being able to get more movies in place so it's not that huge, big six normal DVD cases just taking up a lot of space and having to move everything around to where because I have things where I like to have it have them and all uh, but anyway that's mm, no that is completely unimportant what is important is um, what the point of this video uh, uh, be just talking about why I like episode 2 now some think this is the worst, and why do they think this is the worst prequel, and in some cases the worst film of the series? Well, it's because the dialogue, and not just the dialogue, but the romantic scenes. And for many, while, you know, episode one was sort of hit or miss for some people, it seems as if the how the dialogue is and how it's never been great in Star Wars. When you really think back in the original trilogy, it was never great. All have been written by George Lucas. Um, yes, even Empire Strikes Back. You know, he just gets a story credit. He did write the script because after um, uh, the original writer Lee. Wreck it. Well, now I blink on her name because I'm too busy thinking of this film. But anyway, the original writer of the film, she passed away, and he wanted her to rewrite the script because there are things he wasn't fond of, what she included. Some things he did include in that movie, and then also later in other installments of the film franchise. But for a good portion of it, it was completely axed. And Lawrence Kasdan even said he just wrote George Lucas's word, uh, script uh Almost word for word, he just punched the dialogue up. So, with that in mind, when it comes to the romantic aspects, episode two's um, dialogue with Anakin, with Padme, it does not go well. You know, it seems very odd and creepy. But I kind of want, I, I think it sort of works, though, and I'm going to try and explain why. In uh, episode two, we have Anakin, who's now a Jedi. He's Obi-Wan's Padawan, his apprentice, whatever. And he's a, uh, don't worry, he's become a Jedi, Jedi Knight. And it's been ten years since The Phantom Menace. He was nine in The Phantom Menace, and now it's ten years later. So that means now, most of his life, he's been a Jedi. Well, 
part of being a Jedi is you're not supposed to have any feelings. You aren't supposed to have any romantic feelings. You're not supposed to have any feel anger, happy, sadness, and you know, again, love. And Anakin clearly had a crush on Padme. Um, he clearly liked her. And now there are things changed in this film due to some of the uh, response of episode one. Um, it is, it's like, you know, Jar Jar Binks and all. People complained about that, so he made sure uh, Jar Jar had less screen time. He does play a very pivotal role in the movie where he gives Chancellor or Palpatine, you know, Chancellor Palpatine, emergency powers. Uh, once, you know, he's saying like, oh, he like, gives him emergency powers and everything, and so that basically then this army that they get, he can then have become his uh, imperial uh, empire, which is in the original trilogy, which we also see in episode three, how that became a thing, but getting too ahead of myself. But, you know, Jar Jar Binks was, uh, uh, it seems to be originally supposed to be in the film more prominently. And yeah, I talked about this Darth Jar Jar thing when it was really big and a little bit now. I'm thinking like how it, there could be certain things that deemed it. You know, George Lucas seemed to be really proud of this character and he, in a in some ways, it seems like he had plans, but abandoned those plans. You know, again, I can't say Jar Darth Jarter was ever going to be a thing, uh, but it seems like something. There, there was a reason for that character. He, you wouldn't feature a character as prominent as Jar Jar Binks in Episode One if the next few movies he wasn't going to be completely important. And yes, he is important in this. He gives him Palpatine powers. Which this is how he's then able to become the emperor, but th th again, that's like you know he he should. You think after the screen time he got in Phantom Menace, he should be doing a lot more in Attack of the Clones, and he's not. So I just want to also throw that out. There are certain things changed a bit in this film. And to retool the story, but uh, uh, at the same time, I would, f I, I think, it, at the end of it, it's fair to say George Lucas did get what he wanted out of, the, out of Attack of the Clones, the basic uh, major beats, like of the relationship, and then how the eventual stormtroopers will become, uh, you know, the Imperial, the Empire. Like how the first wave of stormtroopers are before, you know, things change and then they get volunteers and people join the Empire and all that. Um, yeah. Things were changed. And, um, but again, the dialogue. Uh, <laughs> that's where I always began. But, you know, I, I just a thought that came to me. I'm like, you know, this is something I want to also sort of tackle and talk about with Jar Jar. Get that out of the way. So the dialogue, that seems to be the biggest crutch now. Again, with it being ten years since The Phantom Menace and Anakin having a crush on Padme, but then him not seeing her in ten years, you know, that, and him being in touch with his emotions as a kid, that's not something that goes away. And they say he's too old. That's another thing, like, you know, they get Jedis when they're young, when they have the Force, or they're able to have the Force, you know, they, they you know, midi-chlorians account and all that, when they, you know, they have, a, they're able to possess the Force, and they're able to, when they grow, could be able to use it, they want to take that child, and then raise it to become a Jedi, to help serve and protect the galaxy. Because there's peacekeepers, which in the prequels we see is and also they don't necessarily practice that because they then 
get involved in the Clone Wars and like generals and commanders and all that and getting into politics in which Jedi aren't supposed to get into, but they do. And all these things are key to Anakin's fall to the dark side. He was exposed as using, or he was able to use it and express his emotions as a kid. And then when he's a kid, he's also now, he can't use them because, you know, uh, it's not the Jedi way. It's not good to do. They don't want it, you to become attached. So if somebody who you're close with, like your master, or somebody who, when you've come up in the, uh, well, when it comes to like, you know, training and apprentice with others, you know, that you, if they die, you aren't to mourn them because they're now one with the Force. Their cycle and is complete. What they did on in their lives in the galaxy is complete. Well, Anakin uh, was too old, but he was not necessarily, in a way, also prepared in that regard. Also, some say that Qui-Gon, if he was alive, he would have been able to train him, where Obi-Wan was very unprepared. You know, and in a way, there's also jealousy with Obi-Wan. You know, like, you know, he's the chosen one and he has to train him. But he himself had yet to completely finish his training. He was still Qui-Gon's you know, Padawan learner. If anything, he's like he was almost ready to take that next step of being a Jedi Knight, but he wasn't there yet. Uh, so he has to take this kid on to be his apprentice and he's just we're, he's teaching him what he knows and and when you have somebody like that and he's and one of the things is like you can't ha have any emotions you can't feel love you can't feel sadness you can't feel hate you can't feel happiness and all of this it's not going to necessarily bode well to somebody who's grown up at that point to have all these emotions. So, in a way, there was a warning of not training Anakin, but they did it anyway because Qui-Gon asked Obi-Wan, or, or tells him like to train the, train the boy, and as it, it, he wants to honor his dying master's last wish. He there is also some hesitation which we saw in episode one about Anakin. He's not so sure about him, like he thinks he's dangerous, but he's just, you know at the same time he's not sure why exactly. But, you know, Obi Wan did what he could, but with that when he meets Padme again, he's gonna be very awkward. He's gonna be awkward because he does he hasn't properly been around women. He hasn't been around them in a way that's romantic. Any girls, women he knew growing up were Jedi apprentices like him, but they can't have any feelings towards each other. They can't feel love and happiness and all that. So Anakin uh, has to just do what he can to remain true to the Jedi way, but that gets harder every time he's near Padme, and then he's not he's going to go off to be her bodyguard after an assassination attempt was made on her life. So she needs protection now, and he's the one that goes, and that's obviously it's like they're gonna. Like they're gonna fall in love, they're gonna end up together, which is, you know, what happens. And I say all that because that does, it would make sense for Anakin. He he would come off as creepy and odd and not knowing what to do, and you know maybe Padme the way she interacts and acts 
maybe that could have been done a bit better, but and it, again, you know, who knows? Maybe, you know, she's probably never really been around somebody who's acts this way around her. You know, I'm sure, you know, she, she probably had people, guys who had crushes on her growing up, you know, boys her age and all that, but here he is and he's all awkward and not knowing exactly what to say and how to say it so he over he, he's he and Christian's acting is quite melodramatic and the acting in the Star Wars franchise at least in the first six are quite melodramatic and the dialogue is idyllic you know it's a writing style which is sort of heightens that and this the genre of Star Wars is space opera which is you know it's like a soap opera science fiction in the end of it you know they're very good uh, that's a very good apt description in a way I mean it's not you know you could there's other things to say about space opera but if I was just to give a very short answer it's uh, science fiction soap opera there you go um, Star Wars is a good example of that and this very highlights that to very well and maybe not very well because there are people who are just turned off by that they're not really able con to connect with that they're not uh, on board with that and and I can see why you know I'm not I'm not ignorant I'm not blind as to why people aren't like it you know with the dialogue and the romantic scenes yeah it is awkward and it's weird but then you have to remember that Anakin isn't your typical Jedi in that he wasn't taken as a baby and then raised on Coruscant or you know and trained with Jedi and all that he he wasn't he he was taken at age nine you know with his mother saying sure you want to do this and yes go go be a Jedi become a Jedi um, and later in it in this film we see his he has nightmares of his mother being tortured and he they then go to Tatooine and he finds where his mother is, you know, Tusken Raiders uh, kidnapped her. And then uh, they uh, just torture her. And some even said this was what Sidious is doing. You know, the Force made them do that. And this way is and to have his first hint at darkness. He loses his mother, and he, 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 one reason he became a Jedi was he wanted to go back to Tatooine and free all the slaves, including his mother, and well, to him, he's like, he, he, now he's failed. One of the things was he was going to come back and free his mom, as well as others, but his mom especially, and he failed because he made a promise to her. And now, that didn't happen. He, it, he didn't get to free her. He didn't save her. And then this all pro angers him. And his mom dying and everything. And then he goes and kills all the Tusken Raiders. And that's all for a glimpse. His first real glimpse into the dark side. Um, you know. All in all, I, I, you know, I still enjoy the film with all that, you know. And I'm just saying I can understand it, but I do, I, I get what's going on, and I get why George Lucas chose to depict it the way he did. Could it have been done better? Sure. Anything can. Even if something that has seemed to be a complete masterpiece can always be done better. You know, there's no, you know, no, no denying that. Um, Another aspect of this is Obi-Wan um, trailing Jango Fett, father of Boba Fett, 
to Camino and unraveling this mystery of clones, Master Sifo Dias, who was killed a long time ago, but apparently ordered clones, which later become very useful and helpful uh, with the, uh, later on Geonosis. And, uh, you know, how all that happens and how they, with Master Yoda and Windu and other Jedi, help save um, Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Padme from being killed. Um, it, you know, that mystery aspect with Obi-Wan, people are like, that's really great, that's like fantastic, but then people who are detractors of this film, big problem is, you know, focus a lot on this romance. But again, it's because Anakin and Padme have to get together because then Luke and Leia are born. <clears throat> and in episode 4, 5, and 6, you know, they're the heroes of the series. All these things do take place, obviously for a reason, and some do criticize how they were done. It could have been done better, but I like the film how it is. I like how things came about. Again, you have every right, if you're watching this and you don't like episode 2 or you don't like the prequels, you, you can dislike them all you want. For me, they always get better, even if the writing and the dialogue and some of the delivery isn't always the best. You know, I try to look at it all over, all in the big picture, as well as how it was made and why it was made the way it was with the genre, also all to boot. And with all that, it, it does make sense why Hayden Christensen played it the way he did. Granted, obviously... George Lucas, you know, had a hand in that too, but he clearly wanted uh, the performances to be a very specific way, and he got them out of his actors and actresses, so for better or worse, uh, George Lucas got what he wanted. Uh, and, yeah, you know, that's my overall thoughts on uh, Attack of the Clones. Retrospective. Um, I'm sorry, it was a bit all over the place, uh, particularly in the beginning. But I, I don't know. I just wanted to try and lay out stuff, and also nobody cares about the layout of my shelves with movies. You know, nobody cares about that. Well, this is what this is a cool set. I don't know if they sell these anymore. Oh, there is no little Norman Numeral two. That's the only downside, I think, if there is of this, is while it does save up space, there's no little Roman numerals. There's one here. And on the back, but... You know, whatever. I enjoy this film. I think it's a great film, a fine film. And that's all I have to say. Tune in later, and uh, my thoughts on episode three will uh, be up. So stick around if you will. Hopefully you'll enjoy that video. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, until next time, I hope you all have a good day, have a good weekend, good week, and all that good stuff. So please take care, and I'll see you all next time.